Hey, hey everybody welcome back with another video man i'm just wanting to make a small video i promised yesterday in the group that i was going to make a video smaller video about uh the 16 parties that you will be putting on notice just so you can see who they are um and you know according to if anything's changed uh by now you can change it accordingly by knowing this okay also i want to talk a little bit about the definition of discharge and debt so everybody know what discharge and debt is uh and get my little spill on that too i just wanted to make a little video to kind of uh kind of if anybody had any questions about anything they they have a li little bit of something to go on but most of the discharge and debt is like in my next module actually in the third module of the course uh which is uh, course two so let's get into it Okay, as promised, guys, ladies, fellas, um, I'm actually uh, have on my screen here um, the notice of status, which is going to be part of the DOS uh, when you put your uh, people on notice. It's 16 parties, and I know you guys like 16 parties, but hey, you have to cover all bases. And this is just the immediate uh officials that you will be putting on notice okay and you will also think of other people you want to put on notice like child support people which is you know re usually your state um within your state um you also you know you might want to put your surrounding county sheriffs on notice if you want to you don't have to but you can just do your uh, residing city uh, uh, official sheriff if you want to, um, FBI if you want to do them. Um, but in the DOS, we talk about all the FBI needs to be put on notice and everything else as well. But we don't notify that in our list, but it's in the DOS. And all of them, all these officials usually you know, work together and, and changing your status and stuff and changing the system and um yeah so let's get started so you know the first two are your trustees you know according to he, uh, well not the first two but within the first three is your you have your trustee which is janet yellen and this is going on as we speak in 2022 okay you have um, um your president and commander in chief joe biden is one of your trustees your number two is Janet Yellen, the Secretary of Treasury, uh, Treasury Trustee, which is the two most important people that needs to be put on notice from the gate. So let's say if you have these 16, uh, and I'm going to go through all of them, but it, let's say if you had these 16 parties and, you know, you want to 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 break it down right you just say i can't i i can't afford to be sending all them at one time which is cool again this is why i say that this is a process when you're doing these things you know many of you that is that's had already done dos's uh that uh either my student or not my student that's in my group or that has already done a no, uh, declaration of status your way you still can notify these 16 parties that I have listed. Just because you didn't do my DOS, you can still use these same officials to put that same DOS that you did on putting them on notice. So let's 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 start at the top and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay, what uh, what can be done here? So the first person uh, with this list, uh, with my DOS, you know, you will have with this notice of status, it'll be exactly like this. If you're in my course, and you're taking my course, you will actually have this notice of status exactly like this. If you wanted to break it down and make your own notice of status for each one, that's fine. You don't have to, but it's still the same notice of status. OK, if you put them on notice. So let's start with the beginning. We got the president, commander in chief, Joe Biden, who's the trustee. And then you have the attorney general, uh, Merrick B. Gar Garland. Right. And this is the address. OK, so you can go reference this address. And it's exactly 
everything that I'm showing you here is exactly as it is in 2022. Now, some of these officials will change, of course, throughout uh, uh, years, and, you know, four years in office and stuff like that. They change with the president. Some may stay in office. So you just have to go and reference this if you catch this afterwards of this list and update the list accordingly. OK, and I will let you know some of the things that some each state has different states. Of course, you're going to do different things. So we're going to go. Uh, over that too as well while we do this uh, little short video um, so uh, the president of course is in place right now he will be your trustee okay and then attorney general in place is Merrick B Garland which is in place this is the address okay Anthony Blinken is the Secretary of State actually he's the US Department of, he's with the he's the Secretary of State which is the US Department of State. Now, notice this is the department, this is the main place, right? But they have the passport address too, where you do the passport. So when you put these people on notice for all you passport people, they want to do your passport. When you put them on notice over here, it's already changing the system. So it makes it easier when you do your DOS again, when you do your passport, which that's what you're going to do. You're going to, you're going to have that too again with all your three documents. And you, if you take the course, you'll know these documents I'm talking about. But if you're not in my course, the uh, uh, you uh, how you went and did your passport. If you did your passport another way, um, at least this per this uh, Anthony Blinken should have been the one you put on notice. Now, also, he will change in office too. I don't know how many so many years. I need to research that for the people that want to really know that. But just know at the time you are doing your DOS and putting people on notice, you still need to go back and reference and see if it's been changed. OK, so Janet Yellen is the most important of everything because she's besides the president, because she is the trustee and she also is the secretary of Treasury. Right. That is the Department of Treasury. These are the this is the people and this is their address. You can go and reference that, too. So if you see it here and you watch this video, you can pause this video and go look up these addresses to match them. OK. Charles P. Redding is the commissioner, which is the eternal revenue. He's the overall IRS. Is this is everything that's in Washington, D.C. is trumping everything else. OK. And then you got the Department of Treasury, the IRS. You got that department, too, which this right here is going to change. OK. According to your region, this will change right here. Cause you might have Ogden, Utah, then you got Philadelphia. I think I think that's the other regional office, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. But don't quote me on it. I I I'll find out, and and if that's not correct, which uh, you can find that out looking at IRS forms too. Okay, but this would change if according to your region. If you in Texas, this is you. Okay, if you in Texas or the states around Texas, you got a few states around Texas that they use the same Ogden, Utah. Okay. So um, down here, you got the Department of the Treasury IRS located in your local place. See, this is me, Dallas. I'm, I'm in Texas. So I have to use the local. Uh, also put them on notice. See, I'm when you do certain things, you're going to put all these people on this. You need no taxes. You don't, you know, uh, they'll understand that you put an air. You cover all bases. OK, so Commissioner uh, uh, Kalilo. I don't really like his last name, Kajak Kazazi, Jakazi, you know, Kajak Kazi, uh, Social Administration, Social Security Administration. See, when you put your, uh, them on, they're going to have a system changed up. So if you lose a Social Security card, you're going to go through a trial when you get there. Because when you look in the system, when they look in the system and type your information, they say, oh, they might, they might not. But through my experience, they did me like that because I misplaced recently my Social Security card and I actually. Um, when got my and they straight up said, "Oh, status changed." I said, "Oh yes, ma'am." And then they tried to check me, you know. So that you got to stand on your own two feet, and make sure you stand your ground when you say what you who you are. Okay. So the uh, Secretary Tom uh, Vilsack is the United Depart uh, United States Department of Agriculture. You know, you want to do that in case you into agriculture. You doing you know doing what you do as an agriculture. So we just include them. Okay, Secretary Pete uh, 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 Bettigag, Bettigage. I don't like. I say I don't like these little crazy names, but hey, Bettigage. I just say that. <laughs> Department of Tra Transportation. Y'all know I don't like these kind of words. I can read, but I just don't like these old funny words. But hey, that's what it is. It what it is. What it is. So Department of Transportation 
uh, okay, uh, is the Department of Transportation head. So when we talking about when when you know we talk about licenses and stuff like that, you don't have to get rid of your license, people. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna keep saying it. That, you know, I had debates about that, but you must understand that's why you put them on notice. So when you go do your driving license, they already know who you are. So you don't have no discrepancies. I haven't had any discrepancies. Okay, and I have went since I've changed my status. Went to the driving license place. They know who you are already. They're not going to talk to you about it. They know who you are already. Okay, Secretary uh, Gina uh, Raimondo, right? Raimondo. So, uh, Department of Commerce. Oh, most important too. We're talking about Department of Commerce. They need to know. This is their address. You know, you can pause the video and, and, and go reference it. If she's changed, if you see this video after some time, which is currently 2022, um, you know, you you can change this if it's over a certain time. Okay, again, so director, okay, Robert Santos is the U.S. Census Bureau. See see how important these are. These are important peoples that we talk about. Department of Commerce, U.S. Census Bureau, because these people it keeps up with everything. So when you in the Census Bureau, oh, that's a private citizen, American citizen. We have we can't count them because they're not part of the U.S. Okay, we can't count that person. That's a freeman. So they you're gonna be listed as that. So when you you send these off, that Robert Santos, they get all that. You know they they change the system. Okay, that's what this notice of status is. So Secretary Marty Walsh, Department of Labor. Okay, do we talk about Department of Labor people? Department of Labor has something to do with you working. Okay, so you want to change that. So when you doing certain things, when you get a job and all that. You know, even if they file the WABNs and stuff like that, they're going to see that you're, you're foreign and everything. And it's going to match up with everything that you're saying. This is the reason why you're doing notice to 16 parties, not one party or two parties. You have a lot of people that see right today. I can decide. I say, OK, you know what? I want to do the next county over. I can put them on notice, too. OK, so just understand when you put on notice, it just don't stop here. You can forever put people on notice. If whatever you think of, like I want to do the FBI, I haven't really directly did it to the FBI, but it's even though it's in the DOS, but you know, like say, like me, I put the Department of Justice on uh, uh, public notice of this. I mean, on notice of this as well of me being a private citizen. And that's because, you know, I had a, you know, I have been incarcerated before and I know, I know I didn't tell everybody this. I'm, I don't know if I said it in my videos, I've been incarcerated before. Yes, I made a mistake in my life, but, uh, I'm way past that now. So I put them on blast too, because they tried to check me on some things and I, and I haven't heard from them since. So that's the indication that they respect who you are. So, um, then like, uh, Mary Lou Nichols is it, it, this right here is a give or take. And, and and everybody's different. Like my, and I'm gonna tell you the story about this. Mary Lou Nicholson, right? Um, Tarrant County, and that was where I was born in Tarrant County, right? And the clerk, and I said the clerk, birth and death records, right? This is their address. Yours would be different if you want to notify the birth and death death records. Um, hey, what is that for? Excuse me, people. <laughs> but, but yeah, you can, you can actually, uh, find yours. Uh, yours might, this course is going to be different name and approach, but dirt, uh, uh, birth and death records. You can notify them, you know, where you was born, who you are now. So they can have that on record. But what happened with me was they took my DOS and they sent it back to me and talked about, they can't find a DBA. But that sign to me was that they respect it. They're going to change the system, but they don't want to let you know because you got to remember this is the county clerks and they don't want to be involved with nothing. So they're, they're saying it back. Oh, well, because I put you on notice. Now you, you must realize I put the president and the treasury on notice. So you the only one that's going to rebut or, or, or pay because usually. But you have to understand, too, that that wasn't necessarily a rebut or refusal of anything. That was just them respecting my document and, and probably sending it back. But their excuse was we couldn't find a DBA. Right. So really, that's a code. So why are you talking about DBA when I'm this is we talking about birth and death records? No, there's no DBA there. Well, also, OK, it is the county clerks in Tarrant County. 
but they're talking about the DBA indicating me my name, right? Because that's telling them, okay, we, to me, that was a sign of saying, because you have to catch things with these people. It was a sign saying, well, hey, okay, we respect that. We'll change the record, but we didn't see a DBA. So that's like saying, we don't even know who that is. We don't see that, okay? <laughs> we don't even see that. That's what they saying. So what they're really saying, we respect that, but we're sending your document back because they thinking that they need to send my document back because they're not going to keep it on file, right? They send it back. So that's how I took it. So don't when you deal with these people, don't take that because they sent it back. There's something wrong. No, that's not it. That's just them just probably saying they want to give you your document back. So government, uh, Greg Abbott, okay, and that's the government of, of Texas. You must, must put your governor on notice. Trust me, they're gonna straighten out everything. Governor at Greg Abbott know who's who I am. Anything come up in my state or anywhere, the, if and Greg Abbott is involved, they'll say, well, who who is in? Oh, well, yeah, we know who he is. Not personally, but they you know what I mean, people. So this is their office in Austin, Texas. Then, again, okay, I know I didn't mention this, but every time you do this, I know y'all probably know this, but what's that about? You ain't saying nothing about it. It's certified mail, okay? Certified mail, that green receipt, right? I don't think I have one sitting around me. I didn't kind of clean some of the stuff up, but let me see if I got one. I don't have one around me right now. Uh, no. So, uh, what happens is you take the certified mail. If you, some of you guys know and ladies know. I'm sorry about saying you guys, but I'm, I'm going to correct myself. And I'm, I'm really using that as a figure of speech of everyone. Okay, so ladies don't get offended when I say that. But I'm also say ladies too sometimes. So nobody will get confused of what I'm saying. Okay, apologize. So certified mail will be the cert the certified mail receipt number that you put here for each one you send off because they are going to be different. Okay, they're going to be different. See, everyone got a certified mail. You're going to list that here. See, the reason why I left these here to know where you need to be doing it. State where you reside. State where you reside. State of birth. Okay, state of birth. Okay, you do this in the state of birth. Okay, this is where I was, even though I'm in Texas, I'm still in my state of birth. Okay, you see that, right? But the rest of them don't have it. This is just stating that. Okay, so if you see this, write this down. Okay, so if you see this, write this down. You will only get this document if you take in course two. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, uh, module two. I'm going to say that. Module two, course one. Okay, this, this is the only time you're going to get this. You won't get this from here, but you can write this down as you see me doing this video. Okay, Sheriff, uh, uh, Director Mark D. Williams is Department of Transportation here in Texas. Okay, state where you reside. So that lets you know where you need to do this at. So that state of where I, where I reside, this is the, and our capital is Austin, Texas. Okay, this is the director. If you in Texas, you can follow this. Okay. But besides the city, when you know what's in your city, you can follow the same thing. If you're from Texas and you see this, you can follow the same approach. Okay, guys. So certi certified mail, you put your certified mail here in Dallas. We have Sheriff Mar uh, Marion Brown. So if you're in Tarrant County, your uh, which is the county over, which is Fort Worth, you will actually have to put that sheriff there, a state where you reside. Okay, you can put wherever county you. So if I'm in Texas. Whatever county you in, use that county directly. So if you're in Dallas, you're in Dallas County. So you use that. If you're in Fort Worth, you use Tarrant County. If you're in Houston, whatever county you you in, use that sheriff. Because when you do this, sheriff, it's go throughout the state anyway. They're going to change the system and go throughout the state. Now, if you want to use the next county over, county surrounding you, you can do that if you want to. If there's no stopping what you can do. You can do whatever you want to do. It's your document. So I'm not going to go into the notice of status. I'm just wanting to give you... Uh, because that is for the students. The students already have this document. So I'm just giving you the spill on the 16 parties that's involved. I just went over them, okay? Because everybody's saying, what are you talking about the 16 parties? I Here it is right here at the list. I just gave it to you. I went by one by one, and I went slow, slow, slow. So I'm going I'm to swing down again. If you want to stop it, stop the video to pause it to get it. I'm not going too fast, I'm hope. You can always stop it. So I'm not passing up nothing. You can just stop the video. Okay. So slow the video down or whatever you want to do. Okay. I'm going down. 
No, damn. So I'm gonna go back up just for I'm sorry, people. So if you don't see a name there, that's just where you just just sending it to. So in your area, you send it to the same place. Like again, Ogden, Utah. You this is a region. Your region. So go look at the IRS and see what regional office uh, you have for your state. Okay, my my regional office is Ogden, Utah. Okay, for the uh, Department of Treasury IRS National uh, Service Center. Okay, look for yours. It's only two. So you got Agni Utah and you got another one. I think it is Philadelphia. Don't quote me on it. If you have any questions, I'm going to look it up again. Make sure because I know mine. But you can go on the IRS and find that yours. It will show it where you send your documents. And I'm going back over it again slow so you guys, and then we're going to get into this next subject, okay, just to have a conversation on that subject. And this is the, okay. Catch the states. Catch what I got right here. State of birth, state of residence. This is going to help you find out what you need to do, okay? It says what they are, so you can know what they are, okay? All right, fellas, we go, uh, family, we're going to get out of here real quick. Go to the next subject, okay? We're going to talk about discharging debt because that's like the biggest thing. We're not going to get deep into it, but I'm going to give you a little spiel. So you can kind of get an understanding of person like, man, what is discharge of debt? Why do we discharge it? How we discharge debt? Okay. Well, we're not going to get really into how to discharge debt. We're just going to talk about what it is. Okay. Real quick. All right. So what is discharge of debt? Now, there's two sides of this, right? You have the, to, to, for me, for my journey and what I'm seeing, I'm going to give you what my thoughts is and it's common sense and it's logical, okay? So I'm going to give you what I think and I know for a fact, okay, too, because it plays both sides, okay? It plays the public side and it plays the private side, okay? What is discharging debt, okay? Here it says and and and, I, and when I read these things, you might say I'm contradicting myself, but I'm not. That's why I'm saying I'm giving you both sides, okay? And as I go, I will explain. This is not going to be long. This is just going to be a short subject. So, but again, discharge of debt, you know, you have to think about that when we're dealing with these forms and stuff like that, and we're dealing with the IRS, and that's the reason why. I don't know y'all probably seen my other videos talking about why we don't do IRS documents, okay? So we're just going to give a little spill here, okay? Might not make, try to not to make this too long. Okay, what is uh, uh, debt discharge? Well, we say discharging debt the other way around, okay? It's the same thing. Debt discharge is a cancellation of debt due to bankruptcy. Okay, this first sentence is very important. We're going to not worry about the rest of it, right? Because it's still the same concept, but it's in a different way. But I'm going to do it from the private side. What this is talking from the public side, that's why I'm going to read the rest of it and leave it as it is. It's a lot more stuff down here, but that's on dealing with consumer stuff. We, we're going we're gonna to use it because it's the same definition, but it's just dealing with. I'm going to give this. The first sentence is the most important part of it, okay? So let's go over it again, and I'm going to give my spiel, okay? Debt discharge is the cancellation of a debt due to bankruptcy. Okay. Everybody knows what bankruptcy is, right? You can go. If you don't understand and you don't know what bankruptcy is, you can go Google that. I'm not going to go in into here because, again, try to keep video short. Okay. So, first of all, let's go. This is, again, on consumer. I'm going to go ahead and read it all the way out, and then I'm going to go. So when a debt is discharged, the debt is no longer liable for the debt. We all know that. And the lender is no longer allowed to make attempts to collect the debt. Okay, Debt discharge can result in tax income to the debt unless certain IRS conditions are, are met. So which when we talk about IRS, we don't even mess with the IRS anyway, so we don't. this don't apply to us. OK, so I'm going to say that first. OK, so but going back to this first sentence doing due to this being the public side. But this reside, this talks about the, the private side, too. So now they had the Banking Relief Act, right? Emergency Banking Relief Act. Go look it up if you want to look it up. Then we got the Trading with the Enemy Act. Go look that up. They are amended, right? I mean, they are together. So, but those are two different laws. Now, how that happened was Franklin D. Roosevelt 
he actually closed all the banks and took the gold and silver out, okay? So when they took the gold and silver out, we asked ourselves, okay, so let me, let me say this. We, what is money? So the individual U.S. citizen would say money is those green pieces of paper that we always get. No, people, that's not money. That's a negotiable instrument. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But the, 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 when you, okay, the government went into bankruptcy in 1933, right? Okay, my course is about pre-March 1933. You notice, right? And the reason why I did that is because we're going back to that time. We're referencing our freemanship from that time, okay? That's why we say pre March 1933. It's just a reference. Don't mean you born in. Okay, so we'll get that understood. Okay, so that's when the, when they went into bankruptcy, they closed all the banks and they went around and confiscated all the gold and silver. Okay, so gold and silver was around for a very long time. It's really a natural resource from the earth, right? So when people are getting gold and making gold bars, guess who's coming to get them? Because they want control, man. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to say this while I'm doing this video. Like I said in my other videos, we're not anti-government. We're not anti-policing. Okay? This is just me stating the facts. Okay? This is just education. Okay? And it's the truth, though. It's a fact. But when we went to bankruptcy, right, they, then that's when they turned around and made their own negotiable instrument, right? So let's go back to the debt discharge. Okay? So bankruptcy. That's why, first of all, we went into bankruptcy because they took all the real money out. Okay? We still in bankruptcy. Are we still anybody asking? Are we are we using gold and silver now? Yeah, we might use a little piece, a little little portion of gold to make jewelry. Yeah, okay, they let you have that, but you you still pay, you still discharge that, and you probably say, well, how do we discharge that? And that's why I'm for to go into you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm for to go into. It's interesting. I'm gonna give you the logic side of it. So, have y'all ever heard of 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 um? Uh, let me get this straight. Let me get my mind clear right quick. Cause I'm a little, I've been studying a lot. <laughs> so, so have y'all ever heard of everything is already paid for, right? So yes, everything is already paid for. Meaning, meaning that when you go buy a car, I'm gonna use a car lot for example. When you go buy a car lot, when you go buy there and you look at a car, the car you like, those cars are not free. Though that's what they mean by everything is already paid for because they have to spend their FRNs to go and grab these cars to resell to you for a profit, right? Yeah, they already paid for. That's what the true meaning is, is already paid for. If if you want if the car lot wanted to, they can give you the car for free and give you the title. But they're looking for a profit, okay? So that's what they mean. Everything around us is already paid for. Okay. So when a company goes to, to uh, let's use, for instance, a big car lot and they go to the distributor, they buy those cars from the distributor and come back and sell it to you for interest on that. That's how they invest they, they FRNs. Okay. So that's why things is already paid for. So when you talk about, well, I'm going to go take a 1099A and go buy me a car, you're not buying anything. You're discharging the obligation of the debt that they're going to put forth towards you. Okay? So understand what discharging debt really is. You're not paying for anything. Discharging debt does not mean you are paying for something. You are taking care of, you are, you are discharging a debt. Okay, this first sentence says the debt discharge is the cancellation of a debt. Okay, due to bankruptcy. Let's break this sentence down. This is what I mean in a lot of my videos. When you read and we talk about reading, you have to comprehend what you're reading too at the same time. I just say, oh, it says this. But what's in that sentence? It is a cancellation of a debt. First of all, let's look at cancellation of of a debt for what due to bankruptcy we already been in bankruptcy now down at the bottom of this it talks about bankruptcy chapter 7 11 and that's the public side but it's still the same meaning on the on the private side 
How do we, we always talk about discharge debt. I'm on a discharge debt. So what does discharge debt really mean? What is the concept of it? First of all, we are allowed to discharge debt because we're in bankruptcy. We have due to bankruptcy because we don't have no money. Money was gold and silver. Okay. Money was gold and silver. So how, so, so when we discharge in debt, that's something that's already paid for. We're just counseling that debt out that they pass it to us. Okay. So if you go in there, you sign that contract and you say, oh, you must make sex. Let's just use a uh, pay, pay here, buy here car lot or something like that. And they say, oh, you got to pay that. That's a contract that you're signing to take care of that obligation. Now, you are actually able to discharge debt after 60 to 90 days. So that's when we hear things about, you know, in the, on, from this, on the public side, when some, if you listen to your other gurus or mentors, they say, well, you know, uh, make sure you pay your note on time every month for about two months or three months and then go discharge it, which is true because you want to look good anyway, paying it so you are able to discharge. That's a law too. So you can, after 90 days, when you can discharge debt is after 90 days. I would give it 90 days, three months before you start discharging debt. Can you discharge debt from the, from the, from the gate? Yes, because I'm going to explain that in a minute. Okay. There's no say so that you don't, you can't discharge debt from the gate. That's just if, if somebody is mentioning that, that's not co totally correct. So this uh, debt discharge is to cancel out a debt that is due uh, uh, because we are in bankruptcy. There's no gold and silver. There's no such thing as money. So how do we discharge that? Let's look. Let's look at some things. And I'm a okay. So and then I'm gonna explain myself about that. We're not gonna really talk about how to discharge debt, but what we use to discharge debt. So we always talk about uh, uh, um, okay. Well, let's talk about they their cash, right? Which is not cash. It's really the dollar. We gonna use true definitions, okay? Which is a Federal Reserve note. What is a Federal Reserve note? A Federal Reserve note is a term to describe the paper demand. So I'm going to break that right there. When you read, I suggest everyone is, is watching this video. When you read definitions, break it down. You don't have to just go through. See, because if you don't break it down, I, suggest, I, I look at it as like you might not get a comprehension. Break it down. Read a little bit about it. Okay, what's that word? You can go look that word up or whatever and put that in here and then you can really get a good understanding. So while, while I, I, this is what I like to do when I'm mentoring, I like to also break stuff down and give a, my English spiel of it. What I mean by, of course, all this is in English, but, you know, I'm giving my spiel over how to understand stuff. So a Federal Reserve note is a term to describe the paper demand. So when we discharge debt, okay, what we use as a private American citizen, I shouldn't be giving this, but I have to because I just going to give you a glimpse. So anything that's a negotiable instrument must have a demand to it, right? So let's use a bill of exchange, for example. A bill of exchange is a lot in one. It's a draft. You know, it's, it's, it's this also a demand and it's a direction to give the trustees to go by when they're trying to discharge debt for you. Now, who discharges debt for you? You can go look it up. The rule says that the treasury is the one that is supposed to discharge debt for you. But you only have you only the way you can do that is putting them on notice of that. So that's why I'm saying everybody be running and talking about discharging debt, discharging that. Oh, I'm going to use this and use that and wonder why they go to jail. Okay, first of all, if you're a private citizen, you don't supposed to use IRS documents. You don't do that. Because see what it is, the IRS is 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 the, the, the bookkeeper for the treasury. So why are you using the bookkeeper to get to the treasury when the treasury handles the, your affairs directly? You directly do things with them. They're your trustee. Why are you running to the IRS? Because the IRS is for consumers. So if you're using a consumer avenue to get to the treasury, they don't like that. So wonder why people be going to jail using 1099-As and they saying they are, are private citizens. Okay. And it's, you know, a Federal Reserve note, which is their dollar, is a negotiable instrument. So when they took the bank, so when they took out the, the, the gold and silver, they actually brought in their U.S. dollar. So what is the U.S. dollar? 
it just said right here is the same thing as a bill of exchange. It is a demand. So if, okay, we're going back to the car lot. So how do we discharge the debt if we're in bankruptcy? Catch it. How do we discharge debt when we're in bankruptcy? Because we do not have gold and silver. Remember, the United States government is in bankruptcy because we have no gold and silver. So how do we discharge debt? A negotiable instrument, right? Okay. And what we use, we use FRNs to discharge the debt of the obligation that the car lot is putting forward with us. That's how you get to drive off the lot. A car that's already paid for has interest added to it to get their profits or whatever they try to do. Now that's an obligation to you to take care of. That's a debt. So what you're using is the negotiable instrument, which is the FRNs, because we are in bankruptcy because there's no gold and silver. Are you paying for the car in gold and silver? No, that is not money. Gold and silver is money. FRNs is not money. It's a negotiable instrument. Their negotiable instrument that they put out after they took the gold and silver to take control. Okay? To take control. So if everybody trusts this negotiable instrument, a negotiable instrument has signatures on it. Okay? You can, you can actually look right here. Just looking right here, there's a signature right there. They got their serial number. Okay, their routing or serial number, Federal Reserve, identification, and all that on there, which goes on a good negotiable instrument. Okay. They have seals on there. See, we put seals on our documents too. See how and this is what I mean by when they create a fictitious world, you can create your own fictitious world when you become a private citizen, because that's exactly what it is. Okay. You can create your own world too. That's why when we make up our own documents, we have to make it up the right way according to the respect of the laws they got in place. But, you know, you you can create your own world, too. But just as long as you're doing it right to where you can discharge debt. We're we're wondering why we can't discharge debt because we're doing things the wrong way. You have to understand these definitions that's put forth. So, again, a Federal Reserve note. What else is a Federal Reserve note? Anybody know? This is a this is a, a paper demand, right? What else can be a paper demand? Your birth certificate. Your birth certificate is a bank note. It's not a bond. Everybody say it's a bond. According to their side, it they call it a bond, but it's really a bank note. This is your paper demand, right? This is your matter of fact. I'm gonna go into really go into that part right there about the bank. So forget I said uh, it's a paper demand. No, the bill of exchange is the paper demand. I don't want to contradict myself. The bill of exchange, if you're using that, I'm using that as an example, is a paper demand. Liable of the Federal Reserve, okay, uh, uh, let's read, the, read it correctly. I'm sorry, people. A Federal Reserve note is a term to describe the paper demand. Liabilities of the Federal Reserve, commonly referred to as a dollar bill, which we say cash. Why are we saying cash? Why are we saying money? Because this is not money. This is not cash. That is a dollar bill. That's what they call their negotiable instrument. Okay. The dollar bill is their negotiable instrument. Okay. So what does, I, I left this, left this open because I wanted to go over this too real quick before we end this video. What does a Federal Reserve note represent? A Federal Reserve note is a term to describe the paper demand liabilities of the Federal Reserve, okay? Commonly referred to as the dollar bill, which is uh, circulates in the United US as legal tender, negotiable instrument, okay? This is just a negotiable instrument, but this is what we gave the power to because they presented this by taking the gold out and, and, and giving it to you and saying, hey, this is what, this is the real money. It's not real money. It's worth nothing. And then I'm going to read something to you to show you why it's not worth nothing. Which circulates in the U.S. as legal tender, negotiable instrument, people. For practical purposes, the Federal Reserve note is a monetary unit. Okay. 
Why do we use our birth certificate when we discharge debt? Because it's a monetary unit. <laughs> see, see, I understand this. Many don't understand why, how this stuff works and why, why you use these things to discharge debt. Your birth certificate is the most important thing. This is what I talked about. Why y'all don't go get multiple birth certificates? But that's going to be later on in the course. We're going to talk about that because the birth certificate is a monetary unit. Or can, we, let's say we can be used as a monetary unit. It's a bank note, but everybody says bond. No. Okay. I bet you the Federal, the, the, I bet you the Treasury knows and understands what you're doing when you. And okay, who monetizes? Okay, who monetizes? Okay, monetary and monetize is the same thing. It just monetizes like saying who who does the transactions or who who uh, 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 turns this into monies, right? So monetary unit is the object, the negotiable instrument. Monetizing that monetary unit, right, is you take it to a bank and a bank knows what to do. They take it, they do they do they thing with it to turn it into credits, right? To put to put into your account. But can you do that? Nah, you can't really do that. You know, the only way you can do that is discharge debt and make you some FRNs, and then you can put it in your bank account. You know, uh, you know, it's only you can only discharge debt. You can't credit yourself. You know, I could be wrong. I've never done it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say I've done it, but that's something me and my mentor have talked about it. He kind of put some things in my head, but I really didn't think on that. I've been just following suit of what you've been teaching. OK, so I'm teaching you all the same thing. I'm not going to get ahead and try to make up stuff and lie to you. Oh, you can you can go and cash in. No, 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 no. You know, it's, it's other avenues that me and my mentor hasn't talked about yet. I'm following his lead like I always been. I'm not going to veer off from that and I'm not going to teach you guys that. So monitoring unit is so discharge of debt, right? Is is what this is about. I just wanted y'all to get an understanding what discharging debt is, uh, and 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 how you can think about this as discharging debt. So discharging debt again is is basically you taking care of obligation that's already been taken care of because we are already in bankruptcy. Okay, so when you discharge debt, is is you just taking care of something. In my own words, discharging debt is you taking care of an obligation that has already been paid for. To make it easy for you. It's all because it's true. That's exactly what you're doing. You're taking care of something that's already been paid for. Because when you go to the lot, everything on that lot has been paid for already. Because they already went and paid for it. Okay? It's like a pass down. When they buy it from the, the, the distributor, they pass it down to you. And then you take it. If you buy it from them, you pay it off and get the note. You can say resell it to somebody else. It's a pass down. Because see, that is already paid for. You're just taking care of obligation by discharging that. Okay. So it was another thing that I wanted to bring. Okay. Uh what would happen? Okay, this is where I want to go, and then I'm gonna close this video out. If y'all have any questions, we can talk about it later. But like I said, I'm not gonna get into how to discharge debt. I just wanted you to know what discharging debt is and why discharging debt, uh, uh how like the, the the players that's involved with discharging debt. I didn't give all of it, but I gave a little bit, and we'll talk about that in the course. Okay. What would happen if the dollar was backed by gold? This was was intriguing to me, and this is what caught me caught my attention and i and I, I say i got to speak up on this okay this means the u.s dollar would be severely divide uh this devalued of course if you bring in the real natural resource gold and silver that's the true money of of this this land that paper money would mean nothing why do you think that they took that out because that's going to rule over them nobody going to Imagine if it was together, it would be devalued because a person would be like, what is this? This is our money right here. What is this crap you bring? I mean, I don't believe in that, that crap because they lose power of that, right? They will lose power because they can't use that green piece of paper on you, right? Because that's what they created, right? Just like you can create a negotiable instrument. Say if you create a negotiable instrument and it gave some value and gave power to you they won't want you to do that 
That's why they take the gold and silver out because they don't want you using the gold and silver because that brings power. Okay, they want all the power. Okay, so just just know that that's a little bit of spill of it. This is to their advantage. So when we believe in the dollar, then that's what's going to carry everything all over business. Everybody using it. You see what I'm saying? Because that's what you grew up on. That's what you understood. So all businesses go by that. So that's what gave them the power. But if you bring gold back, if they was to bring gold back, they would be worth nothing. It would not be a government right now. It might be. They might. Have, OK, we might be considered them maybe, the, you know, we, we won't think of them as as like they are now. They wouldn't have no power for real. Because they were like, man, what did you bring this crap here for? What does that got? Man, this is the real money here. But a lot of us don't even know gold and silver was the real money. Only the ones like us in the group and uh, everybody else that understand. And even some people that still U.S. citizens still know is gold and silver was the real money if they research. And I would, you'll be surprised how many don't know that already. So uh, causing, causing inflation uh, and since global uh, trade relies on the U.S. dollar as a reserve, uh, uh, currency. Uh, excuse, excuse, excuse me, class. Excuse, excuse me. I got somebody interrupted my video, and I don't edit nothing. What is it? Yes. <laughs> so that's my daughter. She wanted to be. I don't edit my videos, bad people. So I hope y'all understand. I'm a real human being. I ain't. Hey, listen. So that means the U.S. dollar would be a. a, a Severely de devalued, causing inflation. And since the global trade relies on the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency, trade would be a grinded to a halt. Of course, because that's what they use in to do trades with other countries. So if you bring the gold and silver back, that dollar is nothing. They be like, man, y'all better bring that gold or y'all better take that crap back where you got it from. Bring us that gold and silver. But since everybody adopted the uh, the negotiable instrument. Uh, through whatever government it is, none of that matters. No gold and silver matters, okay? Because they didn't. They took it out. They stopped all that. They wanted to control me, so they took it out. So, because again, if today you took gold bars and you put it together, I mean gold, and you put it in the gold bar, they'll come snatch that from you because they that that's no because that's more power. You got the power. They ain't want you with the power like that. Okay, so gold and silver, and only like I say, the only gold and silver we have is a little piece of ring or something around your neck or something. Man, imagine you had gold bars sitting in your garage. <laughs> they coming and taking that. They gonna say, "Oh, you gonna take? We gonna take that? We no. This is this. That ain't gonna get nowhere here." That's why they say they don't trade their can their their U.S. dollar for the gold. They now they, they'll take the gold. But they ain't giving you no, no exchange for that. Now, hey, returning to uh, uh, conversely, conversely, returning the gold standard and keeping the gold price low will cause deflation. Of course it will. Because everybody is going off uh, these pieces of paper, right? Okay. So, one other part. Who owns the Federal Reserve? No, nobody does. The Federal Reserve system n is not owned by anyone. So anybody that says, oh, no, such a, no, 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 say it right here. It's not owned by anyone. The Federal Reserve was created in 1933. I mean, 19, sorry, I'm so used to saying it. 1913 by the Federal Reserve Act to serve as the nation's central bank. So the nation's central bank is the one that controls all the banks. Bank of America, Chase. All them, they the one that funds. So when you doing, when you doing, uh, when you putting your FRNs in there, that's who they send the FRNs to. You know, the taxes, all that, they handle all that. The Treasury tells the Federal Reserve uh, uh, Bank that hey, credit this person's account for this or whatever. But again, I told you that's that's not how it goes when you want to get credits to your account when you're dealing with negotiable instruments i'm just using that as an example uh like if you're doing a check let's just use a check for example if you're using a check that's a negotiable instrument too right okay so you take the check and you deposit it and then they they run it through the system the federal reserve system then the treasury 
or uh, the Federal Reserve System at that point controls that part and will say, but if you're a private citizen, the Treasury will let them know, hey, take care of this obligation for such and such. If you get in your document monetized, like I say, your monetary unit monetized through the bank, the Treasury will then come back and say, hey, Federal Reserve credit uh, such and such bank account. Like if you're doing, if you're dealing with a truck or a car, anything like that, this is this will answer y'all questions real quick before I get off this video. Okay, so when you do, let's say if you wanted to do the car and you wanted to take your negotiable instrument and monetize it through the bank and how the bank handle your handle it for you because they the only ones that know how to create credits right they don't want to know how to do all that the federal reserve know how to do all that the treasury is your trustee he handles all that and gives that demand to these people this system federal reserve system and the bank so it trickles down like this the federal the treasury gives the demand you give the demand to the trustee right through your negotiable instrument okay say using a bill of exchange right and your monetary unit your birth certificate right then you have you go through there and you say hey listen uh, as you go get uh, a bill of sale or something like that from where you're getting the car from and you say hey i need to take care of the obligation now who now first of all you need to know who takes care of debt when we talk about see this is what i mean about we run and we do uh, 1099 A's and we talking about we discharge debt, but who just who's the only one that can discharge debt? You don't run to the IRS to discharge debt. The Treasury is the one that discharges debt. Okay, so everybody needs to understand that the Treasury is the only one that discharges debt. The IRS don't discharge debt. Go look it up. I'm not gonna do that here because I'm making this video too long as it is. So. You, 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 the, okay, this is what happens. You, you give the, the, the bank handles the negotiable. So when you do your negotiable instrument and dealing with the bank, getting it monetized, if you know what you're doing, I'm not going to go into the spill here. Okay. I'm just giving you a little bit of glimpse, right? Because I'm giving you the concept. The bank monetizes your information. Give with the treasury. Hey, treasury, you such, such got this here. This is the man. He got this involved, this involved, this involved. Okay, well, send us a copy on over. This is my thinking. Send us a copy over or whatever. Okay, whatever, however they monetize, I'm not going to, don't quote me on that. However they monetize, I'm just going to say it like that. Okay, because that's, I'm not going to say that if that's not a fact. But I do know these steps. They get with the treasury. The treasury say, okay, well, we'll, go to, we'll, we'll get back with you on that. Find out you're a private citizen and be like, okay, we can do this for this individual. Because that's who takes care of your affairs, your debt. They are the ones that discharge debt, not you going directly to the creditor or whoever it is to discharge debt. You can't do that. This is why we get shit sent back. This is the reason why we don't get shit done. Or if you're doing it the wrong way and they do do something and you go to jail. Because you're not going right to buy at right avenues. So everybody, well, I'm going to take this coupon and do this. Man, listen. Uh, 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 students, I'm just saying I'm keeping it 100. When you go through there and they, if they monetize it, this is the actions of that. If they respect you like that and you're a private citizen, they see that you are, they know you handling your own affairs. This is how they know you know how to handle your own affairs when you're doing shit like this. And they be like, okay, well, the traders say, okay, well, Federal Reserve, we need to uh, make sure we credited XYZ truck lot uh, bank account this amount to discharge that obligation for Mr. Stone, right? And what they do, the Federal Reserve say, okay, because they the one create the credits. They the ones that create the credits. If they want to make you a millionaire, they'll say, man, well, just make, just give him $2 million in this account. If they wanted to, see, if they wanted to, they can do that. So what the Federal Reserve do, the Federal Reserve say, okay, well, uh, $20,000 to, uh, truck x x truck lot you know in you know stuff like that so when they do that right then that person that you discharge the debt with will let you know that obligations has been taken care of they're not gonna go into a whole bunch of spill they're gonna say oh oh mr stone that obligation has been taken care of we got your title and this and that you can pick it up boom 
This is, but this is what I'm saying. You have to go read and understand these things, how they do things. What, why is it like that? Again, a lot of this is about the public side too, but you have to look at it on the private side, showing that uh, the bankruptcy part. I just said, talked about it. We are already in bankruptcy. They took the gold and silver out. That has something to do with pro private side too, not just the public side. That has something to do with the, because uh, we are in bankruptcy. There is no money. So you're using these FRNs to discharge the debt. Okay? They're giving you their negotiable instrument. If you have enough of these, you can discharge the debt and get the title. If you don't have this, that's why you put what you can down to get that debt put on you. Right? To get the debt put on you. Once the debt is on you, you have to bring more negotiable instruments or credits to take care of the, the, the debt. That's the true concept, people. So I'm going to get off here, man. I'm glad to put this video out. I, had, I know it was time for me to make another one. I'm going to come with some more. But it's going to be on another subject. I'm going to break it down. Again, these will be in my courses, deep, more in-debt stuff. So I, I really just wanted to make this video to kind of give you a, inf a little information. And someone asked me about the 16 parties so i made that but i wanted to add this in too what is discharging debt what does it mean why are we doing it plain and simple i just made this plain and simple if you don't understand go back over it again i explained it all right people i'm out man another day man i hope y'all enjoy y'all day hey always willing to help man trying to save lives all right private origin i'm out chill